Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Uh, good morning. Here we are <laughs> at the uh, beginning of April, the Monday of April, April the 3rd, or 4th, I guess, is when this, uh, yeah, the, the 3rd, sorry, the 3rd is when this is going to air. Uh, and we've been talking about prayer. Uh, we know that um, uh, since we last taped, uh, there's been a big tragedy in the world, you know, with the what's called the Nashville shooting at a Christian school, uh, with um, uh, you know adults and children being shot and killed, um, mm-hmm. and you know for us uh, when it's you know you look at you know first of all just children in general, right. um, it's it just wrenches your heart because you know. You know, it's not through sickness, it's not through disease, mm-hmm. it's through somebody else's act that ends their life prematurely, right. and they never get to, you know, experience the fullness of life, and then the sadness for the children, for the parents, of course, right? And the family is it's and, beyond and the friends too, just you know, knowing all those kids and those families in so much pain, yeah, dealing um, with the grief of it all, yeah, and that uh, you know they, um, how come it was my kids? Uh, you know, and other kids lived and mine didn't and how come and, you know, the grief of all that, which is real uh, for sure. Um, and then the question that I've had a lot of phone calls about it is where was God? Right. Um, and Where was he? And if he's good, how could this happen? Yeah. Uh, and that if God is good, then how can this be so? And it's born out of a a false, in a sense, theology that God is in complete control, Mm -hmm. and if God is in complete control and can make everything happen the way he wants to, then how could this possibly occur? Because even even anybody would say, that doesn't seem good to me at all. Ending ending somebody's life prematurely, a little kid, how does that work? And, um, And so, it's because of that false theology that if I truly believed and understood and God truly was in complete control, then these kind of things would be prevented because mm-hmm. he would step in and prevent them. And, and, and so it's not understandable because I don't understand the first piece of it, which is the control piece of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me just give you a, a simple example that we have to explore. By the way, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Uh, more because it's real, uh, and it has. It's a question that we got. We got to address mm-hmm. uh, because it's not like oh, just you know it's, that that's the way it is. No, hey, I got to understand this. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, give you a simple example. Um, we know something. Uh, Christ uh, died at the cross. We're actually going to uh, talk about this this uh, next this coming Friday when we have End Times Friday. But we're going to talk about Good mm-hmm. Friday. Uh, die, God, Christ died at the cross. Um, and he says, it's not my will that what? Any, any should perish. Any should perish. So um, every, every person that's created, my will is that they all would come to know me, receive what I did at the cross, and live eternally with me. Right. That's clear. It's not fuzzy. Very clear. We also know that, um, and this is out of John chapter 3, everybody stands condemned Mm -hmm. and unless they believe what Christ has done, they remain condemned and live separated from God, living in hell the rest of life. Eternally. Eternally. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so, well, if God was in control... And it's not his will that any should perish. What then would happen? Right. What would be the answer? What then would happen if he's in control, and it's mm-hmm. his absolute will that none shall perish? Then what would happen? 
then everyone would go to heaven. Then everybody would make it mm -hmm. because I can make it happen. Well, there's an issue of the world and the situation with the world and who really is in control of the world and what's the role of, of God and how come it's his will but people don't ever come to know him when mm -hmm. if he's in control couldn't he make it happen right and the answer is well he doesn't because of free will and because of the state of the world and so that's what we're going to explore tomorrow is how does all that really work now we have the, the neat thing is we have great scripture to help us understand it. Yes. Uh, and we'll get into it tomorrow. Uh, and it's important for us to wrestle through it simply because without truly wrestling through and recognizing the goodness of God, we will not fully trust him either. Right, right. And, and even part of it, and we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow, that even in these children's death, there actually is goodness particularly for them right? because, right. you know, is a sad yes, but they're actually in a place, and we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow, um, what happens there right? Um, and where, where are they going to be relative to their life? And in, from, I can tell you the one thing, because I've studied this in great depth, the one thing I do know today, mm -hmm. they're good. Right. They're good. Right. They're good. Um, They're rejoicing and yeah. delighting in his presence. Um, and this has a little bit, you know, it's our question about Michelle, life, what we call life cut short. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more tomorrow. But in, this, in an interesting thing, it was actually better for her to go now than later, um, mm -hmm. which is beyond our comprehension because, hey, but yeah, but right. no, it's better and she's good. Yeah. Um, and it's mm -hmm. sad. And it does wrench your heart. And particularly, you know, I, I, I lost an adult daughter, daughter. It would be even more wrenching if I lost an, a, a, I you know, a, a nine-year-old or a baby. Right. Uh, that it's just, man, it's hard to, it's hard to put that together. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it, is, it is difficult. It is uh, troublesome. And we're going to address that, you know, tomorrow. So stay tuned, and, and we'll deal with that tomorrow, maybe even the next day, because it's kind of important. As we actually are heading toward the end, uh, when we talk about the end times, is that well, the world's going to get worse, and why? And, and like for example, people right now pray for well, why, why can't God just put it all back together the way it used to be? Right. Now, and the funny thing is, and this is this is part of the structure of it is. Okay, put it back the way it used to be. Tell me what that means. <laughs> um, and it's a it's a little bit of a fantasy of what I thought it was like. And he said, "Well, actually, the world's always been wicked and evil, and it's never really been that. Um, you might have experienced a little bit different, and it might have been easier for you, but it didn't it didn't mean that, that evil was removed. So we'll, we'll right. get it. Unless we'll, you want to take us all the way back to the very beginning in the garden. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, let's go back there. Uh, that'd be good, by the way. So uh, we'll talk about that. But we had a great question come up uh, about prayer. Uh, and Kathy, if you, if you uh, would read that, then we can uh, kind of bring that up. And we'll talk more about the um, uh, process um, tomorrow about this, this uh, situation that happened. Yeah. So um, the person wrote in wanting a you know, question regarding prayer and the gift of tongues. And I believe prayer tongues specifically is what she's speaking of. But, you know, she's been praying for the Holy Spirit filling and recognizes some have the gift of tongues and others don't. And she recognizes it's not a sign of having the Holy Spirit, but the Bible says all can have the gift of tongues. And so I think she just wanted to kind of bring up, you know, talking us through where the role of prayer tongues comes in. Um, and maybe even tongues in general. I think a lot of people have questions about that um, overall. And, and do these gifts still exist? And yeah. For what purpose? Yeah. And what does it look like? You know. Yeah, it's a great question, um, yeah. and it um, it does come up. Uh, and again, it's all over the map. Um, I mm -hmm. think you you and I had talked a little bit about um, there's a a whole uh, actual intellectual theology that's called cessation cessationalism and it's the it's the ceasing mm -hmm. of these spiritual gifts mm -hmm. um, and uh, again the funny thing 
you know, for me is that um, it's just not that fuzzy in Scripture that uh, all the writing about the spiritual gifts are post-resurrection. Right. Um, and um, it talks about these gifts. And it's because of actually what we're going to talk about now is because of the Holy Spirit right. that these gifts are available and usable. And so Christ does say, and this is in Hebrews, um, I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In other words, God's, mm-hmm. God hasn't changed any. Right. Uh, I do think a lot of the people, you know, a lot of people struggling with um, the gift of tongues or the gift of prophecy and some of these that end up falling into this cessationalism camp um, fall there out of fear. Yeah. It's the reality. It's not something they can explain or control. And they have seen, you know, especially in our generation, you know, with all the televangelists and whatever, they have, they have seen the gifts misused. Correct. And in that process have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. 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 And that it's... Um... Uh, because of where it went, mm-hmm. it seems strange. Right. And by the way, people that claim their spiritual ability, they, they got a lot of problems. And mm-hmm. a lot of things they say aren't true and don't prove to be true. And it's kind of hokey. And, and how come? <laughs> uh, there's always one interesting thing that generally comes up. How come? It's tied to raising money. <laughs> right, right. Like, is that, is that, you know, wait a minute, you know, that can't be right. You know, and so it's. You, you just, you do see the enemy having hijacked um, the perception of these things just by the misuse of them. Yeah. But they're still very real. Yeah. And I love, yeah, I know you're going to take us through scripture and show us some of this. But. Yeah, yeah. And so where, what's the truth about it? And, and what do we need to, we need to understand about it? And, and think of the spectrum of it doesn't exist at all. Mm-hmm. To um, if you if you're going to be spiritual, you have to be doing this, and if you're not doing it, you're not spiritual. Right. Um, and and then interesting enough, and this is kind of funny to me, but the people that say that who quote have it, mm-hmm. I'm more spiritual than you. By definition, they're even saying it means they're not. <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> judgment isn't ours to have, and and we are never to consider others better than ourselves. We better than others, mm-hmm. per se. He said, so if you're using that to to try to prove that you're better, by definition, you're not. I mean, it's kind of it's kind you're of already fun. stepping back under the law. So yeah. <laughs> so it's not about that you're you're more spiritual if you have it, and it also it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So, exactly. so let's go into it. Uh, go to Acts chapter 2 uh, and read verses uh, 1 to 4. This is Pentecost. Okay. And go ahead, go ahead and read this. Sure. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven and a, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. Uh, So uh, remember, Christ had told his disciples, um, your mission is going to be to start churches, Mm -hmm. bodies of Christ that are going to start to explore and expand the truth of what what we have started, which is why I spent three years with you to get you ready for this. and uh, he even said this kind of ties in with our prayer discussion is you know hey up until now you haven't had to pray because you've had me Mm -hmm. that's going to continue after you receive the holy spirit because now you'll have me within you and you can just keep dialoguing with me Um, and prayer will become this beautiful life that you've actually experienced and you just continue it uh, because you have the holy spirit he said now wait gather together and it says they were of one accord gather together until you receive it. Mm-hmm. So Pentecost comes, and Pentecost is the, the feast of, of Pentecost where uh, after the Passover, feast of Passover, they, they gather together for the festival, and people from all over the area, the region, are coming with different languages and different dialects mm-hmm. uh, because that's what they're used to. But they come generally with family or with other uh, people of, of, of from their region to go to the temple, do the sacrifices, experience the feast, which is a seven to you know 14 day experience. 
that they all would come to. Uh, and, and so they're, they're, that's what they're there for. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're Jewish, so they're not thinking anything really about Jesus, per se. Right. Um, you know, they knew something happened, and this, this Jesus Christ was put to death. They kind of know that, mm-hmm. but that's all they know. Um, so Peter stands up. And says, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, explain something to you." And he starts to explain it. And what happens to Peter? The, the, he begins to speak in tongues. Yeah, right? he he. The Holy Spirit comes on him. He says, mm-hmm. "Fire, the appearance of fire comes on everybody, mm-hmm. um, all over the place." And it's a moment of of the Holy Spirit now visiting and saying, "Okay, here we go." This new life of Christ is now here, and he is going to put himself within us, and I, mm-hmm. it's going to be me. Um, and it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are now resident within us. And so um, he starts speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Okay, now Peter is speaking basically Aramaic or, or Hebrew because he's not— He's not speaking a. He is not speaking a different language. He's speaking his normal language. Mm, okay. But the recipients who don't understand it per se are what are they hearing? They're hearing things in their own language. In their own language, in their mm-hmm. own dialect, and it's clear as a bell mm-hmm. to them. Um, and it's not. What did he say? Uh, or do you know what he said? Or I don't really quite understand this. It was, it was like God was just saying, I'm going to speak this to you in your specific language that you're used to so it's crystal clear to you. And there were literally scores and scores of different languages, but they all heard the same message. Mm. So, so tongues, there's, there's two pieces of tongues. One is I can speak in my language, and there can be foreigners who don't know English. And they can hear it in their language, what I'm saying. Yeah, as the Holy Spirit translates. Because I can translate it literally, and it's phys- think it's, it's it's physical thing. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're hearing it through their ears in a language that they can understand. It's like, oh, that's interesting. So that's really what that was. Now, okay. uh, Paul goes on to say that um, there's other times where you're speaking in a language that you don't have any understanding of. Mm-hmm. And you and you are speaking it because it's flowing out from you, right? Now, by the way, your mind is just letting it flow, and you don't even know what it means, right? Um, guess what? Somewhere, somebody understands it and is mm-hmm. going to help us understand it because I I understand what you just said, um, and it's called the gift of interpretation. So that. Mm-hmm. Um, either I speak it and somebody who doesn't know my language, it's automatically interpreted for them. Mm-hmm. Or I speak it, I don't understand it, but somebody else does and they can interpret it for the group. So that's the two elements of tongues and, and that's what it happened. Okay, so let's go explore this. So go to um, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, mm-hmm. uh, 1 through 5. Sure. It says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. But um, for no one understands him. However, the spirit in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, uh, and we'll talk about this with the gifts, uh, it's about the edification of those that have a heart to hear and to receive it and to be built up in Christ. So that's the purpose. Remember, that's the, the beautiful purpose mm-hmm. of, of the Holy Spirit in the body. And he says um, that... Obviously, the gift of tongues is real. Mm-hmm. And because, um, again, the Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and he's functional and he's within us, it's not cessationism. Otherwise, 
otherwise the Bible would have told us that. Right. It would say, yeah, it happened for just a period, but by the way, you who are going to experience it later, you're not going to have it. Well, right. it doesn't ever say that, and we still have it, and Paul reiterates it. It's there. Uh, he says, um, it'd be good. Do you have the, the gift of tongues? That's good. Uh, it's even better if you have the gift of prophecy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and prophecy is twofold. One is called forth telling. Mm-hmm. And that is, I'm going to be uh, engaged with you, and I'm going to speak truth, forth telling truth, into you and your situation at the moment. Right. And you're, you're trying to understand it and have a certain perspective, and God's going to use somebody else to say, let me, let me help you a little bit with seeing it the way God sees it, and right. then walk into it, and I'm going to yeah. be a truth teller, by the way, he says there's no judgment to that. It's encouraging. Mm-hmm. It's comforting. It could be. It could be challenging. Hey, mm-hmm. you're you're going the wrong way. You need to go this way. But uh, if it's God, it's always invitation to the kingdom covenant life. Right. Uh, and sometimes that looks like you know receiving a word of encouragement that you're giving someone. Uh, God prompting you, hey, send this scripture to this person or share this scripture with them. And you may not even know what it is that he's going to speak to them through that. That's but right. it's a prompting that he gives you yeah. to gift and to build up other yeah, believers. Yeah, just give them the truth. Or you're listening, and this is happening uh, right now. I've got a couple who are going through a struggle, and their, their things aren't working, and, and they're upset, and how come, and why not, and um, and, and uh, it ought to be. And, and so because I'm engaged with them, now, by the way, I don't have an answer for them. Uh, what I do have is I have access to the right. gifts, gifts of the Spirit, forth telling prophecy. Father, what do you have to say? Tell them that right. they have it all backwards, and this is actually leading to some really good things, and I'm doing a great work, and I've already done some things that they are misinterpreting. Uh, here's what I did. Now, by the way, that's a word of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Speak it and invite them to process it. Right, right. Not like you better sh- or should. It's just here's what God is saying. Go spend more time with God and, and understand it. So I said, well, let me help you understand something. Here's what I hear God saying. You got it backwards. It's a different perspective. He actually wants you to see this as good. He's already shown you some good. Here they are. And trust him that he's actually leading this into something beautiful. And don't right. be so upset about it. Is actually cooperate with him. And when they heard it, it's like, oh, that's what God is up to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't understand fully what you just said, but I receive what you just said. I'm going to go process that with God now and let him guide me into what he's trying to show me. And I was a, used as a prophetic gift to speak truth or forth telling into mm-hmm. a situation. And it's just to move him down the path. That's it. Um, mm-hmm. The other piece of, of prophecy is called foretelling. Foretelling is, hey, pay attention, heads up, something's about ready to happen. Uh, you need to you need to go spend more time with God because this is happening this way, and um, I, I, there's no detail to it. There's no big, you know, uh, here's the next six months of your life. It's just here's a a a uh, alert. That, that the Holy Spirit is speaking, and I'm prophetically saying something to you that you need to understand um, and then go forward with it. So forth telling or foretelling. And Paul says that's way more valuable per se than tongues. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, not that I don't want you to experience tongues, right? but make sure that you understand that helping each other with the gift of prophecy, which, by the way, that's why there's not a person that's a prophet. Now, there's there's people that are called like Jeremiah. You were called Old Testament prophets. Yeah, you were called to a much larger scale. Mm-hmm. So you could be a, you could be a prophet at the moment, and it's not just speaking into somebody's life; it's actually speaking for the nation, or it's speaking about mm. something bigger. And I'm calling you to serve in that role right now and this this might be a while and yeah you you are going to be called a prophet Mm -hmm. but don't look at it as everybody comes to you as the prophet 
they have they can have the gift of prophecy as well, and they should, in because they're dealing with everybody's life. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so uh, he says um, it exists. Uh, it's important. The prophetic is even is even greater. Uh, now jump down to uh, verses uh, twenty through twenty five, and it explains a little bit further about this. Uh, twenty to twenty five. Okay. Um, Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips I will speak to this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed, and so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Okay. So he basically says, now remember that tongues primarily are a sign. It's actually mostly for unbelievers. Mm-hmm. Not for believers. Uh, why? Well, because uh, it's going to be they're going to march into a situation where um, you're going to be speaking uh, in a language that they actually understand, right? And they're going to say, "Oh, um, I know you're not speaking my language, but I'm hearing it in my language." Automatically, I'm going to pay attention because mm-hmm. it's wow, that's interesting, and that's what happened at Pentecost. Like right, wow, right. we're hearing this. Uh, we're going to pay attention. They became, you know, they became believers. Um, uh, and then what he says uh, in uh, the other scripture here in Corinthians is, if you're speaking a language you don't know, mm-hmm. and there might be other believers there, by definition, somebody else has to have the gift of interpretation. Right. And speak it back into the so body. So it edifies. So it edifies the body. So just the aspect, and, and I and I try to help people understand this a lot of times is, and they say, well, that person spoke in tongues. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what was the interpretation? Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't have an interpretation. I said, well, then it wasn't tongues. Right. Because right. if God provides both sides of it, Exactly. If it's true, truly tongues, he provides the interpretation for the sake of the body. So that there's edification. And he said when it's public, mm-hmm. it has to be interpreted. If it's yeah. not interpreted, then it's it's just acting a certain right. way, but it's right. not really the, the true gift of tongues. Right. Now, so what you're talking about, though, is you know the, the public use of tongues, but there is also speak and... And Paul talks about in his own personal prayer life of prayer tongues, where it's really just you and God um, and and speaking in prayer tongues. And I think her question may even have had to do with that as well. Do you want to address that a little bit? I think he hits on that in um, 1 Corinthians 14 and kind of the middle there, especially yeah. through yeah, you know, he, 12 he's, to 14. He, he, says, he says that, yeah, that, that you can, uh, you know, have a prayer of, of tongues with God. But again... Mm-hmm. He says that it's it's just to draw you into a spiritual place that ultimately has to become now known to you. Because he said, if you just stay there, and mm-hmm. yeah, you have a spiritual experience, but you never understand anything that God's saying, well, you're not receiving the wisdom of the life of prayer, which is available to you. Mm-hmm. So he says, don't let that be your goal. Rather, if it, if it happens, fantastic. Realize that, that God is alerting you, but basically, ultimately, it's got to be leading to wisdom and clarity and understanding because why you have the privilege of dialoguing with God. And he'll, he'll communicate it to you in a, in a way it is. So, you know, don't, he said, don't grab it as a spiritual, uh, you know, a marker. Okay, so go to um, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, and we'll pick this up again tomorrow, but I just want to start here. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians 12. Um, and actually, uh, let's just read um, uh, 1 through 6. 
because it kind of sets it up. 12, 1 through 6. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Okay, so he, that's okay. Let's stop right there. So okay. he, he sets it up and says that um, I don't want you to be ignorant about mm -hmm. spiritual gifts. Okay, now, <laughs> again, think of the, of the simplicity of that. How come? Because they're a gift he's given that in order to reveal himself more thoroughly to all of us. They, they actually exist. Right. But, uh, they said, you're going to experience these. Mm -hmm. And there's a big shot at being ignorant about it. Mm -hmm. Because you limit the truth of it all and you assign your own thought to it as opposed mm -hmm. to let it flow with what it really is. And I'm, I'm going to try to help you explain something here. Because he said there's a lot of ignorance mm -hmm. about what's happening to you. And you're starting to go off base with it. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I want to bring the ignorance back to truth uh, and so that you can enjoy it and understand it. And he said the key is in verse four, five, and six diversity of gifts, same spirit, mm -hmm. differences of ministries, the application of those gifts, the same Lord. Right. In the ministries themselves, there's diversity of activity, moments but the same God who works all in all. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so he says, this is big time stuff. It's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna explain it to you, particularly because, and of course we know he goes into, into chapter 14 and talks specifically about, and, and remember they just went through discussion of 12. Mm -hmm. Chapter 13 is about love. And then 14 is about tongues and prophecy. Mm -hmm. So the question comes up, okay, well, what about this? Right. If this is true, then how does, what about this tongue stuff? Mm -hmm. um, which is what they've been getting off base about. So we'll, we'll address this tomorrow uh, to keep going and we'll actually push the uh, thought about what happened in Nashville the day after. Uh, it's really important and it's a great question and if we understand it properly and then go pursue it, it's such a fantastic, beautiful piece of the Christian life mm -hmm. that we actually, instead of being worried about it, we actually start to go the other direction and start experiencing it. Right. He said, guess what? That's what it's all about. <laughs> mm, so, so that's what we'll do tomorrow. So we'll uh, pray. Father, uh, you know, thank you for... This privilege, uh, it is confusing, and uh, may you give us clarity and wisdom. And uh, we know there's going to be lots of questions about it. We're happy to answer them. So we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, okay. thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And I look forward to continuing this discussion tomorrow. Yep. Have a great day. It'll be a good one. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.